Welcome back to the Chill Sweets Kitchen. Today we are making the best ever pink birthday cake. So this cake is pink through and through. So I wanted to make these layers really fun, so I swirled together three different shades of pink cake batter. I have a full tutorial showing how to make these swirled layers if you click the link in the upper right corner. So once I had added in all my spoonfuls of batter, I used a small offset spatula to swirl the drops together. And this is just my favorite vanilla layer cake recipe, which I've colored using a bit of pink gel food coloring. So the layers turned out really beautifully, and once they were all baked and trimmed, I began frosting them with my classic American buttercream. I like to have really thick layers of frosting between my cake layers, so I always add on a pretty generous dollop, and then I spread using a large offset spatula. To make this cake even more fun, I also added some rainbow jimmies between the layers. I chose to leave the frosting just uncolored and white because I really wanted the colors of the layers to shine through. However, if you wanted this to be super intensely pink, you could also use a pink frosting between the layers. I love frosting with American buttercream because it's my favorite frosting to eat, but if you like using a different type of frosting that's a bit less sweet like a Swiss meringue buttercream, you could definitely use that as well. So once all four cake layers are stacked, I smoothed the overhanging frosting using my large offset spatula by just running around the sides of the cake. I then added a bit more frosting to create a really thin crumb coat all around the cake. Once I thoroughly covered all the layers, I used a bench scraper to scrape away any excess frosting and to also make my crumb coat really nice and smooth. And the smoother your crumb coat is, the easier it will be to get a really nice smooth finish on your second coat. So once the crumb coat was complete, I chilled the cake in the freezer for about 5 minutes until it was nice and firm to the touch. Then I added a second, thicker layer of my American buttercream. So there's no right or wrong way to frost a cake, but I love starting on the top with a big dollop of frosting, kind of spreading it out to the sides of the cake, and then carefully working that down to the base of the cake. The most important thing to keep in mind when you're frosting a cake is to try to get it as evenly spread around the cake as possible. The more evenly it's distributed, the better time you'll have when you're using your bench scraper. So once I had done my best with my large offset spatula, I moved on to my bench scraper. And when you're smoothing with your bench scraper, you want to make nice and long strokes around the cake. As you're doing this, you want to apply a light amount of pressure because you do want to smooth the frosting, so you do need to add enough pressure to pull the frosting around the cake. But at the same time, you don't want to scrape off everything that you just added. So it's a bit tricky to get the amount of pressure just right, but it gets easier the more you practice. Using my bench scraper, I then drag the overhanging frosting at the top of the cake into the center with some gentle strokes. Then I chill the cake for about two hours in the fridge, and this part's really important because to be able to paint on a cake like this, you need the buttercream to have crusted. So I've mixed together some pink gel food coloring and a bit of vodka, and I'm just using a sterile paintbrush to paint this onto the sides of the cake. To create a bit of an ombre effect, I used a bit more gel food coloring to create a darker pink paint, and I painted that over my initial brush strokes. So using vodka is great because it helps the gel food coloring that you're adding to the cake dry more quickly. If you don't have vodka, any clear spirit will work, or you could also use some lemon extract. And then comes the really fun part, which is decorating the top of the cake. So to build the base for all the candy that we're going to add, I used my favorite frosting tip, which is an Ateco 869. So it's really just a giant French tip, and I frosted little frosting dollops into a semicircle, which I then began to add all of my candy on top of. When it comes to candy cakes, I'm really lucky because I live a few blocks away from Dylan's Candy Bar, which is a giant candy store here in New York City that has bulk candy that's sorted by color. So I went a little wild and I got pink jelly beans, pink gummy bears, pink gumballs, you name it, I got it. However, if you don't live near a candy store, there's tons of packaged candies that would work great for this too. You could use um, tropical Skittles which have pink, you could use pink Starburst, you could use pink sour candies, there's a lot of options. So to really make this cake stand out, I added a few different types of suckers on top of it. Not sure if they're called suckers or lollipops, um, but I grew up calling them suckers. 
So once all of those were in place, I also added on a really fun sprinkle blend, which is from Neon Yolk Shop. So I tried to get these sprinkled into all the nooks and crannies of our frosting dollops, but my frosting had started to crust, so a lot of the sprinkles kind of flew around. But luckily the cake had crusted as well, so it was easy for me to push them back into place and where I wanted them to be. And that is about all the pink that we can fit onto this cake. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons below. And also don't forget to let me know what tutorials you'd like to see next.